No, he had he had to shave his fucking neck beard, but it's like three it's, fucking hairs. But he doesn't have any hair. <laughs> what yeah. do you mean? Do you, you, Greg, did you say your neck beard? I, I didn't even know. I didn't beard. even know he, he doesn't has have one. any hair there. I, that's what I thought too. I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like this. You don't. You don't like. The, you don't like hey, this. This new Greg, format. You left. Uh, I don't like how my side. You left some dirt reach. on your. Can you go wash your face real quick? There's some dirt on your face. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck. Uh, all right. Facial hair shaming me. That's right. That's right. Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Curly Brace Podcast. Uh, we're done with the official sterile intros, and now we're just gonna. <laughs> sterile. You're doing one. You're doing us. You're sterilizing us now. I'm not sterilizing Remember, anyone. You don't, have, you don't have to say that no more. Yeah. You don't got. You don't. You don't got to do it. It's okay. We're leisurely now. Are we, are we being completely leisurely? We are leisurely. All right. Well, can I at least talk about the topic? This is yes. How we're gonna do. yes. Okay. So Tell the me. topic this week is the future of transportation. Okay. So we're going to be talking about all kinds of different things around transportation, where it's come uh, from, where it's going, all that stuff. So yes. I, I think we just go ahead and jump into it because uh, there's a lot of really cool shit that yeah. I want to talk about. And we I know about Red... the first car, 1958. What? Is that right? Was... Can I just no, say? That's so wrong. <laughs> that's, so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that's so fucking wrong. <laughs> was, I wasn't even close. Uh, you're off by like 50 years, but yeah, I mean, 1908. If, yeah, basically, it's around that oh, time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. We'll leave that. What are you? What were you saying, Greg? Nothing. I lost my train of thought <laughs> with that. Thanks, Red. <laughs> Anyways, 1908, first car ever built. Ish. 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 Yeah, it wasn't exactly 1908. Is it, it, around the ni- early 1900s. First car was built. Also around that time, you had first planes coming out is this like the first car like somebody threw together something and was like that's the car or was are we talking about like no the first, so the like first Ford, the first car was the first four t models i think i that, that was called? like i i swear no, that was I'm like talking 19... about the first car with a combustion engine the first car with a combustion engine was oh, late yeah. 1800s and i believe it was what? germany or somewhere in europe that actually built the first car yeah oh wow yeah Ford just happened to, they were building, right? So they took the European model and they were building very customized, you know, one-off, like one guy is building the entire car, right? Right. And then they invented the assembly line, right? They invented the assembly line. That's why the Model T and, you know, Ford, right, it revolutionized the industry in that. Um, So that's how we also got the five-day work week, right? Yes. I'm pretty sure that was, that that. is right. Yeah. Really? Yeah, that's like, that was the whole point of it, like. Uh, you have to hire these people to work the line and stuff, but they got to be able to yep. have time to spend money and make it like that. Yeah. Interesting. That's how the five day work week be- came to be. Cause before it was just work. You work six days a week. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes seven, if you weren't religious. Right. Right. I mean, I still do that, but whatever. <laughs> I know yeah. it, it's totally different now. It's like, you can't really, now it's all under I, the I can't table. imagine going to my work. Yeah. I can't imagine going into my work and seeing like, I need, this day off. well now i can since i work monday through friday but as a nurse on the floor uh that would not have flown yeah 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 so model t in the early 1900s right and yep. uh now we are i'm just gonna skip the rest of car evolution <laughs> there's a lot of cool shit Hold in there but we can't what? skip what? over the ford gt and uh well, okay so we're Shelby. skipping 95 percent of the way there all right yeah yeah okay because you're ford talking GT, about the Shelby. Yeah, the Shelby Mustang and all that stuff. And all right, well, yeah. So we we get to the yeah. '60s, right? We have muscle yeah. cars that come out. Another really great innovation, right? Um, and another really cool redesign of what the car can be, right? It's no longer just utilitarian. It's cool, right? It's something to be seen as a work of art, not just a engine on four wheels, right? Um, and then we get into you know the early 2000s, and we have the minivan era. Right, which is a whole recon uh, conceptualization of what a car is, right? Like, I what don't have provide, a station wagon, what right? Do. What it can provide, what it can do, yeah. um, and fast- how much wood paneling can we put on? <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> so much. You know, can it's we make really this funny. Rush in the Five limit. years. <laughs> it's, it's really funny because I was so excited for the new. Um, oh God, what's it called? What's Jeep's new 
uh, really big SUV, the, uh, the Wagoneer, right? The Wagoneer. So the, the old Wagoneer, Wagoneer. right. Yeah. So the old Wagoneer actually did have wood paneling on the side and I was really excited when they brought it back in, but now it's just a big fucking Durango, but yeah, whatever. I digress. <laughs> kind of disappointed about it, but it's fine. Um, yeah. so anyway, but we're on the, we're focusing on the technology side in this episode. So today we are going to talk about where we go when from here. When did we get into microchips and things like that in vehicles 80s the 80s, in the 80s. were in the yeah, 80s. So, mm-hmm, yeah so like 80s cars were um very 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 unreliable because it was the first introduction of like electronic systems being introduced into traditional analog systems um okay. say 90s they got better right but personally i think the 90s design styling is just the worst in existence <laughs> it's just everything's a fucking bubble <laughs> everything but, in the 90s yeah. sex and, and everything yeah. in like the early 2000s like anything 2008 or like yeah I'd say 2006 or later is kind of boo-boo. Yeah, it's like they for, discovered yeah. aerodynamics. The and 2000s, then they just I went... think of the PT Cruiser and the oh. Volkswagen Bug. Well, because oh. we had, the, bug. We had a, the economic crash in 2008, which forced manufacturers to cut back yeah. on their designs and things. Oh, bubble. Cost. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was a housing bubble, and our cars were bubble, too. Yep. I mean, it, I mean the Corvettes, doing? like, everything was ugly. Even yeah. the Ford Mustang was like, ew, you know? Yeah, the uh, b- before 2005... Where it was like the uh, the the I don't know it just looked like a fucking sedan. Yeah, it was like, like it was just round nosed and it's yeah. so bland. Yeah, yeah. And then two thousand five, they just added like a thousand pounds of weight to it, and we're like, here, it's a muscle uh, car. You're again. talking about the uh, the Cobras. I forgot a, or were they called Cobras? I think so. It was I forget. I don't they know. Had Mustang. A cobra. I they had a Cobra. I a Cobra model, but I don't remember. If it looked was... like a yeah. generic like. You know, like like off-brand Hot Wheels, they make like a race car. It, yeah. That's what I think of when I think of like the orig- like that that styling of the Ford Mustang. Yeah. And then it just went out the window with that new one. I remember my uh, my now wife, her dad got that as soon as it came out, and it was such a treat. Speaking oh, yeah. of the Ford Mustang, we go from the 1980s, right, with microchips. Then yeah. we start pushing for self-driving and stuff like that, right? Yeah, and electric vehicles, self-driving. And electric vehicles, yep. which leads me to the Mustang Mach-E, which is disgusting. <sighs> oh. <laughs> they just, they, they, they have so, like, like honestly, and I don't understand why they didn't do this, uh, but let's talk about the Ford Thunderbird. Would it not have made sense Love the to Ford take, Thunderbird. but to take the name of the Thunderbird and attach it to your first, like, EV out the gate, right? It'd be cool if they actually designed it better. I, I mean, but yeah. they just, it, it looks great if they just removed the fucking Mustang badging from it. Like, personally. Yeah. Uh, if they just... I, I don't like it at all, really. Yeah. Are they coming out with a new Thunderbird? Mm, no, I don't know. I know I, they, they have that name, right? But I haven't heard anything about yeah. one coming out. They could be. Yeah. Um, but anyway, back to Red's point. Yeah, so we're, we're getting into, you know, self-driving and we're getting into um, electrification, Right. And that's really, I think the first point that we want to talk about more than anything is that in the next 10 years, you're not going to be able to buy a gas powered vehicle unless you're buying some specialty vehicle. I, I would right, say 20 for... years, the next 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. We're okay, gonna have some if, you, if you look at regulations and stuff today, most of them are pushing for like 2040, like somewhere between 2035, I think, and 2045, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think most people, like the once the infrastructure is really? there, it just. What'd you say, Greg? Oh, I think Greg was saying California is pushing for 2035 on electric cars, uh, or banning combustion engines, I should say. Yep, 2035. Wow, so 10, yeah, okay, so it's kind of 10 years. Yeah, there's a lot of pushback on that. I think for the, for the, I think you're probably right, though, Red, like, for the rest of the nation, it's going to be about 20 years, so. Yeah. Are we going to be ready in like 10 years so we gotta get well, let's, like hold on hold on let's, chargers let's talk about what the biden administration has pushed out right so they have a huge infrastructure bill and part of that infrastructure bill that was pushed out like what two years ago last year uh what what came out of it was an entire electric charging infrastructure package okay so companies that can build the infrastructure are allowed to bid on the locations as to where these are and the companies are already bidding on it. So they're already in the process of building all of these electric charging stations at gas stations or at, you know, um, individual isolated locations. So right. that's if already in the process. there was a stock, I could invest in that. If there was a stock I could invest you in. You just need to look up that. the companies. Look up the companies that are, you know, That are bidding building. on it. Yeah. yeah that are look up the companies it. that what are bidding companies on are bidding on what companies are bidding I don't on know. I mean, I, honestly, right it wouldn't now. surprise me if companies that are subsidiaries of like Shell like or Shell, Exxon, or, yeah, Exxon, exactly. Bucky's, like 
Keep how could eye. you like, not? How could you not you capitalize their, their on the electric vehicles that are calls. coming? Yeah, just yep. go to their quarterly calls. They should discuss it there. Yep, exactly. If yeah, not, I mean, like, they should be writing about it and stuff as well. Yeah, I mean, but but my my thing back to is like, how could you not capitalize on what is inevitably coming? Right. Right. Absolutely. Like, like we future. know that gas is going out the window, right? And I honestly yeah. think semi trucks will be the last stop as to where gas still is. Um, but like they're already like I don't know if you guys know this right, but Formula One, right? The fastest race cars in the world are already extremely hybrid, and they are going to nearly fully electric in 2026. They will yeah. still have a small combustion engine, but a lot most of their powertrain will be from battery. So yeah. they're going Our there, electric right? motors. Yeah, yeah I, I take that back. The last thing after semis will be NASCAR. But yeah, right. NASCAR yeah. will forever be gasoline, but <laughs> but it'll be like a retro style event in like forty yeah. years. Like, yeah. Oh, did you go to NASCAR? I love watching those gasoline cars. Yeah, I haven't seen so one of those in thirty so years. Monster... <laughs> Do you think people would still go to monster truck rallies if they converted all their monster trucks to electric? I think so. It would just yeah, sound like just, little RC it's cars. It's not about the gas at monster truck rallies. It's well, about it's the, the noise, size. though. Yeah, but no, it's the but noise. But you can get used to it. It's not about the noise. It's about the practical no. things that they do. Greg is somewhat correct. It is somewhat about the noise, but like I still think people would become accustomed to the electric sound because the trade-off from not getting your ears deafened by a you know uh, basically a non-exhaust motor is that you get to hear the cars crunching and you get to hear the thuds and the slams yeah. of the big giant trucks. So yeah, I think I think and people I would appreciate the heard, trade-off. Uh, a kind of like lyric drive by, but I heard one just the other day drive I by have me heard in the one drive lot, by. And it sounds so Whoosh. fucking cool, dude. It's just a, it it's just a hum. like the future. It's just a yeah. hum. Yeah, it's like Yeah. <laughs> no, it's <wild. laughs> It's fucking yeah. sick. Yeah. I want my car to sound like this uh if I get an electric one. <laughs> is that the, the Jetsons? Jetsons. <laughs> That's what my Someone on Reddit car should sound like. <laughs> Someone on Reddit posted a joke like, "This is what an electric car would sound like if you got rid of the muffler. <laughs> it would just sound like a Jetson car." I mean, basically, yeah. Hydrogen there is the no muffler. Like hydrogen. <laughs> it was just a joke. Hydrogen is one of those interesting uh, things, right? Like, because in a perfect world. I would love hydrogen. I think yeah. that hydrogen technology is the coolest thing ever. But I have one hang up with hydrogen. What's your hang up with hydrogen? The current manufacturers building hydrogen engines aren't. Uh, Hyundai being the exception, Hyundai is building a hybrid where the hydrogen engine actually powers the battery. But most manufacturers are building a hydrogen engine the same way they build a gas engine. And you have the same amount of moving parts, you have the same amount of problems. And you, you're essentially like. You're just replacing it with the hydrogen, which is, I guess, the goal. But I would still prefer an electric vehicle due to the lack of maintenance required. Right, that's What's true. What's the hang-up, though? Is it is it because you have to fill it up with, like, hydrogen? No, it takes, or... like, a, a few... That's the same like as gas. The... Like, you just fill it up. It's really quick. But it, it's all the moving parts. Right? Yeah. You got a combustion a lot more engine with parts, belts yeah. and, you know, pistons. Oh, and are you trans... worried about, like, reliability yeah, and all that? Yeah, transmission. You got... I, it's uh, like i don't want all that stuff you know what i mean if i can go buy an electric car with like seven mo seven moving parts or i can buy a hydrogen power car with 1400 moving parts you know i'm gonna pick the electric yeah. car yeah no i agree and, and and the focus has gone to electrification anyway i mean like toyota right so toyota has been the big proponent of hydrogen uh you know propulsion but they're the only company and they, they took a chance on it. And honestly, it just hasn't taken off the way that they wanted it to. So now even they, even though they're behind the curve, they're still trying to catch up and focus on just solely electric vehicles. So I don't know enough about hydrogen engines to feel about this. I think I remember hearing about like the first hydrogen engine back in elementary school. And then I hadn't heard about it again for like ever. And I believe it's and like, I'm talking like early 2000s. It's like a process similar to like, kind of how osmosis works if i understand there's like a membrane in there and it does something to like produce power and then that it extracts hydrogen atoms from water and it uses right. that to generate energy the problem is is the amount of energy that it's required to extract the hydrogen from the water is takes more energy to take that hydrogen out of the water than it produces does that make sense 
that makes sense. So that's okay. that's our big hurdle with hydrogen engines. So we're trying to get the yield up to where we're net positive. That's right. Yes. And and in most cases, well, not most cases, and and some manufacturers are doing that and are are able to do so. It's just right. uh, the infrastructure and the cost are ridiculously high. The consumer can't afford it. Yeah. Mm. And trade off though for electrification or le- electric vehicles, right? Is that you have a higher cost of a vehicle, but you're not having to pay for gas anymore. No gas, no maintenance, and a lot of yeah. people don't less think about this. I'll but say if you less have maintenance. A, Almost no, almost no maintenance. You have alignment. I mean, you still and have tires. tires. Well, tires, brakes, alignment. The no brakes, brakes are much. No brakes. There's no brakes. You you have regenerative braking. All the energy that's used for braking doesn't go into a brake yeah. pad. It goes right back into the battery. So you're not wearing down a brake pad. There's nothing. Like it's just you brake. But even and all if I the slam on transfers. my brakes, though, if I slam on my brakes, there's no brake pads. There's it, it'll the energy transfers to the battery. Yeah, but like. Is it you, just you have, revert? You have, you have one pedal. How, you have one pedal I'm driving. I'm also wondering how. You have one pedal driving. The car brakes on its own. You shouldn't be slamming on your brakes. Okay, but all right. Anyway, yeah. I was saying if you do though, if you do slam on your brakes, uh, I'm not. Well, I guess if you're constantly just slamming on your brakes, but it really should. I mean, let's say you slam on yeah. your brakes occasionally. I, my, my point you being probably is that you still have like 15, <laughs> 20 years before you need to replace a pad. If they even have, I don't know if they even put pads on them. I, I don't know. I, I was just yeah. saying, trying to think of everything in the wheels, right? That you would still have yeah. to do maintenance on. But bra- um, brakes, brakes are not something they they consider as maintenance when you get an electric car because the regenerative braking keeps the whatever they put in the brakes from wearing down. Because all the I'm energy at transfers. A, I'm looking at a picture. I'm looking at a picture of it, and it looks like the motor just reverses as you're braking, and all that energy that's being built up. From the momentum of your car going forward and your the motor going in reverse to like break it or to hold it in a so there's no brake collected. It's just the motor and yeah, it's just the motor and the motor yeah, can that's... spin two ways. Yeah, and the part of the motor that actually does that is also the same part that collects the energy and right. recharges yeah. the battery with it. That makes sense. Oh, okay. yeah, that makes sense. There's, I think it's confusing there's... when you say regenerative braking. We still think the brakes. That, are part well, that of is the confusing. Equation, You're right, and I'm glad you looked that up. It's not because that's why you don't. Yeah. That, okay, that's that makes more sense. Yeah. I heard I heard of it before as like one of the benefits of an electric car, and I just accepted it, but I never looked it up and like actually saw how it did. I just imagined brake pads with like an outlet. Well, I, I, like, I knew there the wasn't going to be any it. brake pad there because I knew the energy had to transfer, but I just didn't know what it was doing to, to do that. So I'm glad you looked that up. Hmm. Gotcha. Moving on. I just saw, it was, I just looked at the first picture that was on Google. So yeah, you have like, you have like almost no maintenance sense. with an electric car. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I know it's much less than a gas-powered vehicle. So that's that's number one for what is awesome about electric car. Number two, you have no gas, right? That, again, is a huge selling point for me for an electric car. You have car. to pay for electricity, but you're talking about Yeah, but pennies, pennies on the dollar compared to gas. gas dollars, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I and again, I listen to this uh, talk show, uh, radio talk show in the DFW area every Sunday that I him in the car and it's about buying and selling cars right it's car dealerships it's a car dealership uh show uh but they ask one of their uh they have one of their i want to say it's a cashier or something like that they have a model three okay and they asked her because she drives all the way from anna down to allen right so it's about uh for those you don't know it's about 20 mile there and back uh, or there one way and so 40 mile round trip so she does that every day right five days a week her total costs a week and electric charging is about fifteen dollars a week because she does it at her house. Yeah, fifteen dollars a week at her uh, house. Hmm. That doesn't sound very good. That doesn't sound good at all. That's sixty dollars a that's month. That's how much my wife. That's like how much you spend on gas in a month. That's way more than that's... I spend on gas in a month. Well, or way less. Gotta... I'm sorry. Way less than I spend on gas in a month. Yeah, I spend. Yeah, I spend. Gotta... A, I spend Your car isn't that. like. Uh, a, you don't drive anywhere. You're fucking work from home. <laughs> no, no. When I go, when I go, and I, I, I go for like a whole month. You know what I mean? Like back when I was driving every day to work. Uh huh. I'd spend about forty dollars a month on gas. I knew where you lived, and I knew where you worked. Not to make it sound super creepy, but like. No, no, no I'm talking about from Denton. <laughs> I see where you, you remember saying. when I lived in Denton. I don't, but okay. So you lived we in work, Denton when we worked and... together the first time. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Was it at that apartment? 
Yeah, yeah, the apartment. Okay. Yeah. I know where that was. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. you lived in Denton, but you drove to Las Soul. That was my Kia Soul. Okay. And that, that cost me about 40 bucks a month. No. And I got about like 30 miles to the gallon. Yeah, but pretty close to that, about 28, 29. Close. 40 yeah. bucks a month? Yeah. I didn't no spend way. that much on gas. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. There's no way. I did not spend that much on gas. Of course, I get like 17 miles to the gallon and I drive like 20 miles a day, but I fill up like once a yeah. week for like 40 bucks. Although you're right, that was pre-pandemic and when gas was like 15 bucks to fill up a Kia Soul. So that is true. That is true. But yeah, Remember 60 bucks seems a little high cars? for electric. <laughs> I spend $300 a month on gas. Well, an electric car might benefit you for sure. It absolutely would. Yeah, yeah. it absolutely would. That so does, That does seem high though, $60, $60 a month. But even even a Tesla like supercharger though, it only costs like fifteen bucks to go from zero to one hundred. That's true. In yeah, like twenty minutes, much. right? So yeah. when you're on the when you're on a road trip, like you're gonna sit there for like fifteen twenty minutes and go from zero to one hundred for like fifteen bucks. That's, the the uh, that's new my Hyundai will do, electric cars. The new Hyundai I think does ten percent to eighty percent. I think is what it said. Uh, in fifteen minutes. That's not that's not a surprise. I mean, they just get better every year. Like every well, that, every freaking month, they're making a new battery yeah. advancement. So. It, it, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I, I the elect electrification side of things is definitely going to continue to grow until it just and takes over. And once we hit graphene batteries, we're in a yeah. whole new world. And I think we've talked about this before with carbon nanotubes and all that. And you're going to end up with a charge that's like what? I don't remember. It was something ridiculous. Oh, it's like you could basically go a thousand miles without recharging. Yeah, so it was because you can ridiculous. shove the batteries everywhere. Like they're not lithium ion. They're not. They don't need a giant heavy well, fucking tray the, at the bottom. The other thing is with with graphene batteries. Let's say you have a lithium ion battery, and you're like, dude, I don't want to spend twenty grand to get a new battery, right? Right. Well, graphene sheets can be slipped into lithium ion and improve them drastically. That is true. That is true. Yeah. That is true. All right, we're already like. 20 minutes into this thing so let's <laughs> move let's, it on from electric vehicles I go a little bit from uh, uh, personal transportation to public transportation yes so let's let's do a quick little recap of the problems with the united states right so the rest of the world as in europe and you know china japan uh you know hey, europe they, asia <laughs> you're yeah, you're but not all of asia right like Most obviously yeah um, but public transportation is huge, right? In other places in the world, in the United States, outside of your major metropolitan areas, like if you're not on a plane or in a, in a worst case scenario, a train, then you're not going anywhere if you don't have a vehicle, right? right. And that's a really big issue. Um, you know, when we talk about the future of transportation really in the United States, I think it's just making more public transportation more accessible to people in the the rural areas right i agree i agree yeah and so how do you do that with you know out without having to hire people right to go drive vehicles out there well it's autonomous driving right it's a, it's autonomous driving right like if yep. uh, like for example i'm just going to give a quick example right i am in i'm three hours from the nearest walmart right because i work on a farm okay maybe not three hours but say i'm an hour right if I can request from Walmart a card to come pick me up and go shopping or take me shopping, then, you know, that is huge. That's absolutely huge. So, uh, you know, or I can request a car from, you know, the airport, right? And I can just say, hey, airport, send me a car, right? And it's no one's driving. So the only thing I'm paying for is literally just, you know, the ticket there. So yeah. similar to, you know, eventually. Uber, but without the driver. Right. So. <laughs> Speaking of Uber, because we're going to get really futuristic here, because Dallas is the first test site for Uber uh, for their VTOLs, okay? Yeah. So vertical takeoff or land, I believe. I think that's what it is. That sounds But right. basically, <laughs> they're building Uber air taxis, okay? okay? To be able to take you from different places around Dallas for, I'm sure, what will be $1,000 to $1,500 minimum, if not more. But the idea oh. is, is that these vehicles are electric and they will charge on their little stations that they land on and then they'll be able to take people to and from. So, for example, if I'm at Cowboys, right, a Cowboys game, and then I want to get home and there's a station in Rowlett, then I can literally just go from the Cowboys game and fly home, right? So, yeah. and it would take, you know, say 20 minutes rather than an hour. 
That would be amazing. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that's that's what we're getting to, though, right? Is the 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 better our batteries get and the lighter our batteries get, the more potential we have in the air to go faster right and to go longer in the air because in the air is really where i think electrification that's the final stopping point for electrification um as far as our transportation I and so would, i would argue actually underground hyperloops stuff like that well yes i agree but as far as i know the musk backed hyperloop has kind of failed and died out right so yeah has it i haven't heard anything yeah, I about saw, it like I, succeeding or failing i saw this thing from business insider and it was like i don't know like three months ago but it yeah they were saying basically that's like been abandoned by them for the hyperloop for now so um i think it's still a great idea but you have to have the infrastructure like backing it right so how many stops in a city are you going to put a hyperloop or is there just one stop in a city? And if there's just one stop in a city, you still have to deal with the public transportation issue of getting to the hyperloop compared to an airport to where like, like DFW is a great example, right? There is a dart rail that runs through DFW, which if you guys don't live in, you know, the DFW area, that's the Dallas area rapid transit. It's basically a train, right? It's a municipal train. Um, but if I were to take the dart rail to get to DFW airport, it would take me about an hour and a half yeah. at least because yeah. I have to go from where I live into downtown Dallas and then get on a different train and then go out to DFW airport. Like it just, it, it doesn't make any sense for me to use well, any hi- public transportation. Hyper, hyperloops. The, the idea of hyperloops is you have one location and then an ending location. You don't have anything in the middle and it just exactly. shoots you that location quickly yeah but you have to get to that starting location is my point right. and similarly with dfw airport right even though i can get on a train and but it, you know if, if i had the option if somebody said hey i could fly to colorado for two hours or i could take a bullet train for 40 minutes i would go take the bullet train uh, here's a good question how long let's say they started opening up those uh tunnels right yeah they're ready to go you can go to california and like five hours okay how long until you use you start using it like how much time do you give yourself as buffer to, for everyone else to like work out the kinks oh like just to see if people new... survive like have you seen a picture <laughs> i mean that's have a you fair seen question a video of like the hyperloops yeah like there was that there was that one video where uh i think it was elon and a reporter going through one and it looked very cramped and they were using uh one of his cars the uh, that's different so so it. that's different that's not and a hyperloop going... that's the uh the what is it called the boring company yeah right? that's, that's where they do the car you park your car yeah. and it, like takes you yeah it, that's that's completely different but a similar principle though of being able to similar, go much yeah. faster you know on a different different right, medium than rail, regular traffic right rather right. than you get causing and possibly causing an accident at 300 miles per hour you just park right. your car and it latches to a rail and they just shoot you right right Compared to so cool. the hyper rail the the hyperloop idea is based around maglev technology. Okay, so there's two currently two different ideas like out gun. there. Basically, yeah, I mean there's two different ideas out there, right? So you have completely passive maglev technology, which is where you have magnets pointing different ways to keep the train car elevated okay so you'd have like one magnet pointing right one magnet pointing left this might be backwards and one magnet pointing you know down and one pointing up and basically that allows the train to stay in a constant state of levitation on a magnetic rail okay and then you have a second theory which is where you have that plus you have active electromagnetics going on in a separate set of magnets that are constantly raising and lowering to help with aerodynamic drag and to help with, you know, the weight that's in the current car. So, so like one axis of magnets keeping you elevated and the other one keeping you stabilized. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right. X and Y. Yep, that's exactly right. So that's what's currently out there. We know that the technology is there, but is the, the, the question comes into, right. Is there a, is there a cost benefit to it? There's a cost benefit to the end user, but to cities, right? The, bene- the the nice thing about air travel is that I can take off in an airplane and there's nothing up there. So that means I can fly wherever I want, really, and I can land wherever I want. Can I and just I can... clarify real quick, just the, the hyperloop? I just want to clarify the main thing that makes it special is not just the mag levitation, but the, like, the air pressure. Like They just remove all the air yes. pressure so there's no air friction. So you're moving yes. at a consistent speed without any friction any outside force oh so you're just shooting through at an enormous speed with no outside force so it's extremely efficient but 
it's also extremely energy intensive with it being extremely efficient. And I think yeah. that's the holdup for a lot of people because how much energy does it take to suck air out of a 400 mile long tube? Well, I, I think you air pressure it and, and you keep it air pressured. And then when the two, when the vehicle gets to its location, it uh, seals like it, the door seals and opens. And the only place that there's air is in the cargo. So you only need to remove the air the one time. So it creates a, a vacuum. vacuum. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be a vacuum. I think you still have to constantly have pumps sucking out. No, no, no. It's it, it is a it, vacuum. Yeah, but my point is, is that like you know, it's four hundred miles long. Like, of course, there's going to be eventually leaks and cracks and things like that in an air pressurized, you know, concrete or whatever they're building it out of. And if it's not built steel, out of concrete, I well, I mean, but but think about the cost of a four hundred mile long steel tube. Okay. The yeah. size. Wait, that there's also can like a. I, it's it's really complicated. There's like a low pressure tube and all this stuff. Like this, they do this whole thing. It's a whole thing. I know. No, I I, I yeah. understand it's a whole thing. But I they're just also think doing I, like uh like really strong gla glass too as well for like if you want to do above ground. Okay. So there's I like, just there's, think, there's I just, just think a it's a huge cost, just a ginormous is. cost that well, air mean, travel every already public solves today. All, all public transportation is going to be a, a ginormous cost. Yeah, but and, and I agree, but I think, you know, air travel has solved the problem of getting to New York to Los Angeles in four and a half, five hours, right? Yeah, at the cost of, you know, an enormous amount of fuel and $2,000. But that's where that's where solid state batteries comes in, right? Yeah. Uh, How deep do these Hyperloops go? Exactly. I don't, I don't. Is it enough to tap into like deep. geothermal power? Nah, well, it could. I mean, it could. I yeah. mean, there, the the I know that the goal of it is to be completely renewable energy, but I think you can make it go as deep as you want, or you know, it can be above ground, uh, like you know, Red was saying. But I, I don't know. I the just, goal is to create a think... vacuum, and and that way you have very little power being used to push this train along, because. As we know, an object in motion tends to stay in motion unless acted upon by an external force, the external force being air. If you create a vacuum, there's no external force. So the train will just keep moving and moving and moving until you stop it with an external force. Right, right. I, so it's extremely efficient. Yeah, I, and I, I it's agree with It's very costly with, I, to build, I just, but yeah, long my, term, my argument with efficient. My argument with anything related to the Hyperloop is going to be the cost, because we already build, have... Yes. Yeah, we've already we've the United States is not a railway country, right? Never have been. And yeah. the amount of cost that it would take to build us into not just a railway company or country, but a, you know, hyperloop except, country. Except for the actual railways we built all over the US. Yes, but well, let's uh, say, <laughs> isn't that how we, we started? That. <laughs> but but that's used for that's Wait, used for primarily freight, trains. right? It's not trains. used for pr passenger travel, right? Uh, Primarily, yeah, but it's not to not say like, we can't okay, build. But it's with... not like it's not like Europe. It's not like Asia or Japan, right? right? It's it's a very yeah. large country. It's very costly to do that. Yeah, and we don't play nice with other states. Other states don't play real nice with each other. That's right. Yeah, in general. That's, yeah, it would take like a lot of collaboration that they just don't have the time, energy, or money to do. Or the yeah, times. yeah. Unless it like unless there's like a money and because each for state it, has but... their own kind of like budget right and in each state is is has their own income and a state can fail on its own like it can it can it's uh, one state's economy could completely collapse while the rest of the u.s is fine that is possible yeah did you know that texas yeah. is the only state in the united states that is not in debt and is not allowed to go into debt oh wow that's cool. We're not allowed. Y'all aren't allowed. No, nope, not allowed. It is in the constitution that we cannot go into debt. Huh. Well, that worked out in our favor. It did. Oil, baby. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note of, you know, oil providing all the funding for our electric grid, that is shit. Uh, I think it's time to end the video. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think, uh, I think it's a good stopping point. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think we're gonna um, transition our topic next, uh, the next episode, over to space travel, though, because oh, we didn't even touch on space travel. The so, future of space travel. Yeah, I think. Well, hyperloop in a vacuum could be close. It, it would be the closest thing, yeah, to space travel on Earth, because that's essentially. I what just realized if you, if that derails, is it going to be like as if you like, 
you breached in space, just like all the pressure just leaving your body. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, if you crashed in a hyper tube uh, and it, like, it well, you'd be dead before that even happened. Yeah, because you're going 700 miles an hour. But say that you came to a stop and then the glass oh, yeah. just suddenly cracked. I forgot it's moving. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you'd be crushed. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it'd be an instant death. I somehow made up an ideal scenario where the train is stopped, but it's still scary because it's got negative pressure like space. It's oh, yeah. I mean, you'd space be... that it, it, if a hole came in, it would have to come in from the outside completely and there would be air coming in. Yeah, I mean, well, first off, you'd be sucked out of the car immediately, and then you'd literally just die inside of a track that's completely, you know, dead as you, night. I, I you'd don't die, know how it would be die from air. you die from a yeah. lack of air in complete darkness, so. Yeah. Yeah. It, I Fun don't know how stuff. It, I don't know how you would eject out of that, that to be honest. It, you, I'm sure if there was a situation where I mean, there was a I, hole in the train, you would already be dead before, like, you'd have to worry about that. <laughs> I'm I'm saying that a possum digs itself down into the fucking Bruce tunnel Steel. somehow. Somehow, someone left an access port, like the possum got stuck in between an access port, accidentally got into the, you know, air chamber, and then it happened to just fall onto a window of a train going 700 miles an hour in the but there's random, not even enough room. most random it would just accident. Squish it. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't crush my dreams. Let me crush this possum in my dreams, okay? Anyway, the possum turns into a possum soup as soon as it gets hit by the train. You've but already destroyed the vacuum in... chamber. Like no, the train no, no, would, no, no. the train would possum... already be going slower because the vacuum wouldn't work anymore because the possum made a hole. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's like it's like you, you have you have pressurized switch chamber, right? So so you got you got above ground and then you got pressurized little chamber like access port and then you got and somehow you know, it made zero it pressure. through this. And exactly. It's made so a worker this. climbs out, a possum, a worker climbs out, not, seals it, possum falls in. in any That's way. right. That's right. <laughs> That's somehow right. it's so. hanging on, going 700 miles per hour with no issue at all. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no it, just, it just, it falls onto a 700 mile an hour train and then it cracks it the window. It doesn't, it doesn't die it, when it falls onto the 700 No, no, it does. It it's does. Going it's going zero just, in the 700 mile per hour. And it's it's fragile little bones somehow go through the steel. <laughs> no, 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 and, and they go through the glass of the train. What and glass? Then, and then it, There's no and glass. It, and then it breaks the train's window. Is what Greg was getting at. What? And then what window? <laughs> all right. So anyway, so when it breaks the window, what Greg was going? What? So what? So what Greg was going for here is that, and and Greg, I know I'm not putting words in your mouth. What Greg was going for here. <laughs> Is that I just saw his face? Uh, is that it? You know, words in my mouth. There is Fucker. a risk, just similar to a um, you know airplane that you know if you open, if there's a pressure difference. Really crazy things can happen in an instant if there's a pressure you know um, event. I would say yeah. event, right? Of a massive, rapid change in pressure. Uh, and yeah, people. Yeah, you die. saw that video of that guy who opened up the uh, the emergency door while the plane was landing and it like was sucking everything out yeah. or not really everything, mainly just like loose papers and stuff. But people are just like clutching their seat. Like, yeah. Watching the no, I did see that. Landing. I did see that. Yeah. And, and that's exactly. Arrested. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, of yeah. course. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. You got arrested. Lunatic. Yeah. <laughs> Living on the edge. <laughs> Literally on the edge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. We're over till next time. I just want to, <laughs> I just want to point out this stat. Uh, I don't have any data on mag trains, but regular trains, technology that we've perfected since 19, how long ago? 30, Eight? I'll say no, like, like diesel, diesel electric trains since what the forties, fifties, just to the beginning. We have oh, okay. All right. since coal, 1990 coal and 2021, we have an average of 1704 derailments per year. Yeah. I, I, that's yeah. like, that's too much. I want to say that's like five a day four a day. That's crazy. How many fucking like it's crazy to think how many fucking Can you imagine trains... having even just one tunnel collapse on a hyperloop? Oh. I'm just saying. I don't oh, okay. Yeah. I'm I don't gonna know be like how, the last I don't know how a tunnel would collapse on a hyperloop. It's a it's a sealed chamber. I don't What do you mean? It's, it's not the same that's, thing. That's gonna it's be like a, steel. that's gonna be a pretty that's gonna be a fear people are gonna have when this when this comes imagine out. Imagine the claustrophobia not... alone. That would be a problem. The... Yeah. yeah, like I, that would be. I know people that are claustrophobic just flying on a plane, right? And you're yeah. thirty thousand feet in the air. Like the, I mean, again, you're in a metal tube, I guess. But yeah, underground in a vacuum tube, 
in a, inside of a steel tube that's riding inside of another steel tube. Oh, yeah. Fear. I think it of feels better knowing that there's just open sky around, even though I can't fly. But yeah, but if, if having that same plane experience yeah. in an enclosed thing underground, like how many miles underground or mile, I should say. No, nah, no, it's kind of not that much. I, I don't think it'd be that deep. Yeah, not like a uh, no. maybe like 100, 200 feet. Yeah, underground. I, I'd say four or five feet. I'd be more than four or five feet. <laughs> I'd be more than four or five feet. Listen, I've dug four or You'd five You'd run feet through a it's lot crazy. of caskets in Omaha, Nebraska at four or five oh feet. I'm God. just saying. But... <laughs> oh, fuck. Get another okay. one. <laughs> okay. All my questions have been answered. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good, Greg. I'm glad we answered your questions. And to all you listeners out there, please like and subscribe if you like this episode. And if you're watching on YouTube, please follow us. And on Spotify as well, please follow us. Uh, we are everywhere that you get your podcast, and we are also on YouTube as always. Well, gents, until next time, I'll see you later. See you guys later. Peace.